Welcome to this 3D Blender livery creation tutorial. This is mainly focused on a subtle course of competition. It may apply to other games, but the assumption is that you know how to apply it to whichever game you are working in. I am assuming you already know how to create liveries and manage the proper files and put them in the proper spot in order to get them into the game. This is just to show how to get set up in Blender start using a couple of the methods in Blender that might make your life a little bit easier if you're used to 2D. Blender can be downloaded online. It's a free program. It is very powerful. There's a lot of uh, sculpting and modeling and texture creation that can be done in Blender that I will not fully get into in this video. But I encourage you to play around with it if you have a uh, creative idea that you want to use for your in-game livery. The shading tab specifically is something that can be very useful for creating complex materials, complex textures. If you're questioning what any of these nodes or settings do, take a look at the Blender Wiki. They have very good documentation on most of their settings through the program. You can also find a lot more information online. In the description of this video, you'll find the Blender download link, as well as some of the Subtle Course Competition 3D models that you can use to import directly into Blender and start creating your liveries. The workflow I'm going to show you here is what I know. It's what I've learned on my own. There may be better workflows through Blender and if you're switching between Blender and Photoshop, but this will at least get you started and down the path of creating liveries based off the 3D model. Once you have Blender open and you're on to the splash screen, we're going to start a new project. General is fine for our needs. First thing you'll want to do is go to import wavefront.obj. Now you'll navigate to wherever you have the 3D livery files stored. For this example, we're going to be doing the 2019 Porsche. Import that. You might not see anything at first. You just got to zoom out. The starting cube is much smaller than the vehicle. Top right in the tree here, make sure we have the vehicle selected. You'll see these first couple lines change from being the cube to being the vehicle. Vehicle is also highlighted. This is what we'll want to be working on the entire time. Top workspace here, switch to texture paint. Same thing, zoom back out. You can see your 3D model. Maybe zoom in on the UV page here. So right hand side is our 3D model, left hand side is the UV map. We can adjust brush sizes, brush color, the way the color and alpha channels are affecting what's already there. If you scroll on this top bar, you have more things to adjust, something that you may want to check is the fall off. This is how the brush coloring changes as it gets closer to the edge of the brush. We're going to turn the radius down. Strength is the power of the brush or how the color, how much of the color, how the opacity changes as you brush something on. The so first thing you'll need to do, again, make sure we have the car model selected. First tab here in the texture slots section, we need to start adding textures to this model. Right now the vehicle is purple. This is just showing us the model. There's not actually any texture here that we can paint onto. You can see if we try to, it pops up down here, missing textures detected. So we'll add base colors. We're just going to create a base color. Your UV maps and the templates that Assetto Corsa Competition uses are all 4096 pixels wide and high. Make sure you set that appropriately. When we get to doing the decals and sponsors textures, you want to change the alpha to zero. This is the transparency of that texture. If you're doing a base color, then you would leave that at one. Pick whatever color you want, hit OK. So this now is a texture that we can draw on. This is 
essentially what your in-game base color would be if you have one. And then we can go about painting on different shapes. And you can see if we reselect this over here, this 2D side changes to be the same texture. And you can see how when we paint here, it crosses over to the 2D. If we paint on the 2D, it will cross over to the 3D model. So that shows you the link between the two. This is your UV map or your 2D page that you might be familiar with from Photoshop or any other 2D program. This is how it correlates to the 3D car model. This is what you would see in game. A couple ways this can be useful is to identify certain parts. If you're working primarily in Photoshop, so you don't know where these wheel louvers are, you can paint them and then they'll appear here on the UV map. It can be hard to see with how thick the UV map is. And that also works the opposite way if you don't know what a part of the car is that you find on the UV map. Paint it here on the UV map. See where it shows up, the 3D model. In order to get started with our decals and sponsor textures that we need for Seto Corsa, we'll make a decals texture and then again you want to set that alpha to zero so that way it's fully transparent only what we set on this texture will be shown otherwise the in-game base color will come through and okay you can see fully transparent we'll do the same thing for sponsors again make sure you're at 4096 and alpha of zero okay same thing fully transparent we switch between these different textures over here on the left it'll switch the file here as well so decals this is something where maybe you add your racing stripes down the car for example that's what it might look in 2d or you can do the same thing here in 3d say we want to go Directly top down on the vehicle, create a stripe. It'll hit the proper parts of the UV map that we didn't get just drawing across the 2D image. So we missed the rear wing. I think this is part of the roof here that we missed when we drew that first stripe. So that's where the 3D model is able to hit different things that the 2D model wouldn't. But you can see, since we were from the top down, we didn't get the back side of the car where the 2D stripe did. As you design your livery, you need to make sure you're selecting the correct parts of the vehicle, looking from the correct perspective, and so forth. We take a quick look at the shading tab. This is how Blender can also be a bit more useful than Photoshop if you understand node-based material mapping. You have all these different textures. You can add more nodes that do different things, mix colors, add specularity to the texture, add subsurface to the texture. You can do that all within Blender here in kind of a node-based format. So you can get some really complex textures fairly easily and pretty easily uh, editable after the fact by going through the node-based design here in Blender. Back to texture paint. Say we want to add a sponsor decal. We go to the sponsors tab. Again, we have nothing. We'll go back to the base color tab just so we have something to look at. Come down here to the texture properties tab. Create a new texture. Open a image file. For example, a custom number board. You have some options you can adjust here if you're looking for a different look, but we're just gonna go back up to this top tab. Here under brush settings, go to texture. Select our texture here, it's the only one. We wanna go down to stencil. And once you do that, you can see if you bring your mouse into either the 3D or the 2D window, you now have this stencil appearing. You can move the stencil around by right-clicking it, dragging it around. 
control lets you rotate it, shift lets you adjust the scaling. If we want to reset all that, we go to reset transform. Sometimes the image aspect ratio isn't proper. This is squashed down. We hit image aspect, you can see it stretches it back up. This is the proper aspect ratio as to what it would be in something like Photoshop. So in order to line this up on the car, you can click these nodes here. This will get you direct view from a single side. We can position this stencil where we want it. We're all set here. Make sure we're set to white on our brush. True white. Make our radius a little bit larger so we can get the full stencil. If you're trying to do some interesting effects, fall off is something to look at. I have it just on constant so that way it's 100% opacity within the constraints of the brush. Click on your stencil, that'll stamp it on. Now to get rid of this little stencil transparency, come down here, click the X button, and that just unlinks it. It's still there if you want to come back to it. And you can see now it's on the vehicle. And you can see it's here in the UV map. You can see how that might have been a little bit difficult to line up all in 2D. So this is all baked into this one texture we've been drawing on though, not very useful. The proper way to go about it, this is just for demonstration so you can see the vehicle. You want to make sure you're on the sponsors tab when you do this. So we'll go back to our base car. Again, get our stencil lined up where we want it. And then now we go to sponsors. This is the layer we actually want this image to be on. We stamp it there, close that out. And you can see that's our only thing on this layer. So now you could add more sponsor logos across the car, whatever you want to do. You could export just this one element to Photoshop and layer it in Photoshop if you prefer to work there and just have a couple things you want to do in 3D where the panels don't line up nicely. Once you're set with an image that you want to export, go to Image, Save As, navigate to wherever you need to, and then make sure you have your export settings set appropriately. So if you're bringing it into Photoshop, I would recommend zero compression on a PNG or 100% quality on a JPEG, and then do your proper compression in Photoshop. If you are exporting this sponsor's texture right into the game, you need to be a PNG, and then you may want to set your compression here to have a proper in-game sized image file.